since a week has officially gone by since the uh, Diamond Casino officially opened in Grand Theft Auto Online, I wanted to look at your feedback via several videos I've posted, my review video, as well as Monday's Story Rant video. So we're going to go over those comments, see what you think about the story, the update overall, because I'm always interested to see what you have to say. But first off, in the community tab, I posted this. <laughs> I spent over 90 minutes one night out of an experiment playing Vice City PI, one of the slot machines. I got a few W's, but I ended up losing a lot of money until I finally got triple sevens, which basically put me back in the green of sorts. So it put me a little bit above uh, break even. In other words, I would probably avoid the slot machines. It requires a lot of patience and requires you also accepting a few L's, a few W's here and there before you get a big W, or at least a big enough W so that you break even. It feels like kind of a waste of time. Anyways, I want to see what your feedback was regarding this in the community tab before we get going. See, Dong Dong says, good effort, always make my money off blackjack. Yeah, I prefer blackjack, to be honest. I'm more of a card guy. I never really understood why people like playing uh, the slots, especially older ladies, but, you know, teach their own. So the slots are fun. I don't know. I mean, I just, ugh, slots are not my thing. Alex, let's see, the slots in the game are just as bad as the real casino. Yeah, I think that's the point, Alex. So Gizmo, nice job, GB. Only have a couple of W's in the slots. I voted for one of the W's, and I saved 15% on my car. Well, that's good. <laughs> good job, Gizmo. Say, Carlos, I lost so much money in slots. Don't worry, you're not the only one, Carlos. You're not the only one. UGLO, try the Infinite Rage slot machine. You'll win loads. I think, isn't the Infinite Rage one or the Impotent Rage one, UG? Isn't that one, like, really, really low payout, though? I mean, you, I mean, yeah, it doesn't cost you that much to play it, but it's like a lower tier slot machine. Let's see, Sue, this is a no flex zone. It wasn't a flex, Sue. It was a warning to anybody not to waste your time on the slot machines. I see Professor says you're playing the wrong one. I made 1.2 mil on Deity of the Sun. Well, good job, Professor. Good job indeed. So maybe just maybe the mistake was mine. I just happened to play on the wrong slot machine. <laughs> so in the future, despite the fact I'm a Vice City fan, I think I'm going to stay away from Vice City. Well, at least the slot machine. And slots in general, because I think, I think cards are more my thing anyways. All right, so let's go over to my review video and see what you guys thought about it. Let's see, Dr. Anarchy, I like Blackjack the best so far. A lot of people love the Blackjack, including myself. True Gamer, I see you and your wife uh, play Grand Theft Auto together. They love Blackjack, see, yeah, okay. I'm not gonna read people's comments to each other, so sorry guys. El Davo is a great addition to Grand Theft Auto Online. You like it? Well, I'm glad some people actually like the casino update. That's good. I see Joseph, it was all right, but even though they're a multi-million dollar company, they're able to do much better. I expected something uh, this tame uh, because greed has no limit. Sadly, a lot of developers and publishers are just trying to do their best to nickel and dime, get as much money out of us as possible. Sadly, Rockstar and Take Two, well, especially Take Two, is no exception on that one. See, Dr. Anarchy, I see, know your country's laws. I agree. And it is a very risky thing getting a VPN. If you happen to be in one of the, what, over 50, nearly 60 countries that prevents you from playing the casino and the gambling aspects, some the punishment's more severe than others if you get caught, so just be very, very mindful about that. So, Dan, the missions weren't bad, and the gambling was fun for like half an hour as I went around playing blackjack. You, you Don't use the Vice City slot machine. Don't, Sedan. I made that same mistake. <laughs> just say no. I feel like uh, this DLC would have actually fit better into a single player than online. I think that was the original plan with this, but it was scrapped. Along with all the other story DLCs and repurposed, recycled, repackaged as an online update. I say it just makes you wonder what could have been with the single player if they'd given it any attention. Overall, a decent update that will largely end up being forgotten as it doesn't add much in the way of the long-term changes to how we operate within Grand Theft Auto Online space. Hopefully we get some good cars via the incoming drip feed. I think a few of those cars, because there's going to be a ton of them over the next, uh, what, three or four months in Drapocalypse Summer 2019 going into the fall. 
I think some of them are going to be really good. Like the gauntlets I'm looking forward to. Some of the others are kind of cool. Then there's a couple weird ones as well. Hopefully uh, this is the beginning of the end for the nearly six-year-old game. Some people would disagree with you on that. Some people want the online to keep going. I want it to as well, but I definitely hope that Rockstar has better updates in mind than this. Smeg, enjoy the new missions. Felt like a return to GTA Origins. Yeah, I mean, even though you could say that the casino work, I mean, the casino missions, because that's there's the, the six missions, and then you have the casino work, which is the, the chip mi free roam missions you can do. I wish they would have given it a different name. But it definitely has a uh, contact missions vibe to it. In fact, some people were jokingly calling it basically uh, copy pasta missions, except for they made the uh, NPCs a lot more difficult. See, Kane, I think the Diamond Casino Resort DLC is one of those diamonds in the rough. Ha, ha, ha. He loves the cars, the mini games, blackjack, three-card poker. I really like the uh, level of customization in the penthouse. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've taken the interior customization to the next level with the uh, casino penthouse. And that's something a lot more people have been wanting forever is, like, more ways and varieties to customize our high-end apartments than the Eclipse penthouses and now the casino penthouses. It's not at the level of, say, uh, Sims, but it's a lot further along than it used to be when it comes to interior customization. The revamp daily objectives, he's enjoying those along with some other people. Passive mode nerf is wonderful, and the high roller outfit. Yeah, the high roller outfit is really good. The male version and the female versions. It's definitely worth going after the 54 collectible cards, and I definitely mention that as a, a pro. Because you, know, you get a whole bunch of chips, you get RP, you get the outfit, you get a decoration for your casino penthouse. And if you play Reddit Online, eventually you're going to get a gift because of collecting all 54 poker cards in Grand Auto Online. His only problem was the story was weaker. Yeah, we, we do touch about that in uh, Monday's rant video. Hopefully you guys have checked it out already. So yeah, the story was relatively weak. I think most of you would agree with me on that. Definitely weaker than uh, the Doomsday story arc. Overall, Doomsday Casino Resort is the first Grand Theft Auto Online update that you've enjoyed since import-export. So you give it a 4 out of 5. True Gamer really liked casino missions to me. The shootouts felt a little challenging. They were challenging, and I can understand why some people would be quick to defend them. Because, yeah, the game's you know further along now, going on nearly 6 years. And you wanted to make it a little bit challenging than your standard contact missions. So I do understand that point of view. But at the same time, the contact missions will always be my favorite but the casino missions the payouts are my big gripe about it besides the one-time bonus you get for uh, like the first five and then the, the finale bonus and then of course if you host all six you get the car the armored uh, paragon other than that there's no real motivation to go back and replay them because the payouts are terrible so they need to up to payouts or else you know people are gonna wait till it's like double money then to go back and grind them all right, so let's see. Fat Chinese Gaming. I'm very concerned that people will fall into the addiction of gambling. They're not aware of the casino DLC. While it's no cash reward, you can still use shark cards to buy. Yes, this is something that we address in this review video. And several other content creators have as well, including, including uh, Brophy, even uh, Jim Sterling. I'm not a follower or subscriber of Jim Sterling's. I've watched a couple of his videos. I don't always agree with him. I did watch his video the other day regarding his take on gambling in Grand Theft Auto Online, and for the most part, I agree with him. It's weird that there's some countries where you can still gamble, but you don't you don't use uh, shark card money. You only use in-game earned money. And then there's countries like the U.S. and the U.K. and a few others where Rockstar doesn't care. You can it's all the same to Rockstar, even though the game can tell the difference. Even though it all goes into the same pot, the Maze Bank account. There is technically two different types of in-game currency, the earned and shark card currency. I just wish they would have done it a lot differently when it came to gambling, but I understand, you know, Rockstar's a business, Take Two's a business, they gotta make money off these updates, they're not doing them out of the kindness of their hearts or charity. It costs money to make this content. I get it, I totally understand. So I understand they need to find a way to, to profit, or at least break even financially, off the update. They're probably going to do a little bit better than break even, but at the same time, it's, it's like I mentioned in the review video, it's crossing a line to some degree. See, Daz, it's good. The free car uh, wants hosting all heists, well, uh, casino missions. They have kind of a heist feeling vibe to them in a way, but not entirely. 
If you counted like the first five as like setups to the finale, I guess, kind of, sort of, ish. Uh, the free spin the wheel, uh, yeah, that, that lousy glitch. <laughs> Those playing cards, the high roller suits, yeah, there's there's definitely pros, like I mentioned in the review video. There's there's always pros and there's always cons. I see Commander McGarrick like the the Ford Raptor. I guess uh, he's considering the Carrot Care four x four to be the Ford Raptor. It's a nice looking truck. It's an all right off roader, but as Bruffy reviewed the other day, it doesn't compete with the top tier off roaders like the Camacho. But it, it's still a good looking truck. I just wish it was a little bit better stat wise. Martin, let's see. I think it's all pretty cool apart from people that can't take advantage of this DLC. Rockstar should give those people something exclusive to make up for it. And yeah, I don't like the fact that over 50 countries are affected by this update. And there's a huge chunk of the content that they can't have access to. And I think the only reason why we have this update is because A... You had take two Rockstar lawyers looking at all the countries over the past few years, crafting the update to work and to be profitable enough to where it would still make them money, even if it wasn't the, like a huge chunk of the, the content, the gambling, the casino store stuff wasn't available to like 50 plus countries. If it wasn't going to be profitable for them, they probably would have scrapped the idea. But obviously they banked on despite all that, them being able to still turn a profit, a coin, with the casino update. But I'm sure they're not making nearly as much money with this update as, say, previous ones that actually allowed everybody in all these countries to have access to 100% of the content. So it's probably hurting Rockstar and Take-Two either way. Plus, a lot of obvious negative press have been coming out over the whole gambling casino aspect. At least Rockstar's being honest, just like Stim Jim Sterling and others have said. I... I do applaud Rockstar for their honesty. It's a casino. You know, it's poker tables, it's blackjack, it's slot machines, it's the roulette table, it's horse racing, virtual horse racing. It's gambling. At least they're being honest. Gizmo, let's see, I like the uh, DLC. It reminds me of why I started playing this game in the first place. Uh, to goof off with people after playing over the years, it tragically turned into a death match for people who aren't good at the real shooter to prey on those trying to enjoy themselves. I think they screwed themselves by adding the mark to Oppressor. Most of us feel the same way. At the very least, I am disappointed that Rockstar didn't nerf the uh, broomstick, as I like to call it. Because I know I'm not the only one that sent them feedback. I mean, Riley and I did a video about it like a month or so ago. And I know other content creators, other fans of the community, probably sent them information, their thoughts, their opinions to their feedback page regarding the broomstick. And alas... They didn't do anything with the with the broomstick at all, which is very disappointing. Continuing, they now know that we don't like the futuristic crap. Well, I mean, that's that's one plus. We didn't get any of that futuristic crap, and there's none of that in the Dripocalypse Summer 2019. It doesn't mean we won't get something like that come in the, in the December update, if we get a December update. I'm sure we will. But there's it's a very real possibility that that will be a militarized update, most likely, because unfortunately, militarized content does sell. They can't nerf, remove it, and adding a counter... See, I think they could have nerfed it. I think they, they could have nerfed it. They just chose not to for reasons. See, Gizmo's concerned that Grand Theft Auto 6 will be the same thing. Start as nobody, work your way up. And if that's the case, I'm good. It seems to be Blade and nobody enjoys the grind. Now they need to focus on Red Dead Online. Yeah, hopefully we'll be getting an update for Red Dead Online come uh, summer. I know there's, the summer's starting to fade away. But I think we'll get it sometime in August. And I know that August is almost upon us. So maybe in a couple weeks if we're lucky. But regarding Grand Theft Auto 6, Grand Theft Auto 6 is going to happen. But it's obviously going to be story mode. But then what is the online aspect going to be? I, for one, would like them to continue Grand Theft Auto Online past Grand Theft Auto 6. And maybe do like expansions similar to World of Warcraft. Whereas we would get access to the Grand Theft Auto 6 map or maps depending on what you want to believe regarding leaks and rumor mills out there. I would very much like to be able to carry my characters and my money and my properties and my vehicles over from Grand Theft Auto Online to say Grand Theft Auto Online 2.0 but we'll see what happens in a few years from now. Tank Engine Jr. Let's see uh, I'd give this update a 4.5 out of 10. It ain't that big just a few missions and a casino to waste your money on. The cars are pretty cool. Yeah for the most part, I mean, even though the missions are intense, they can be a pain in the ass. And like I've been saying, it's pretty much 
copy pasta, similar to uh, the contact missions of old. But surprisingly, a lot of people really like the contact missions. And that's one reason why Rockstar posted what the dispatch missions with Martin Mandraza a while back, along with uh, Simeon's repo work. They saw that there was a an interest for that type of content as opposed to the adversary modes. Archangel, I really like this update. We've gotten tons of cars. The missions are fun. I haven't played the casino games yet. Oh, I know he's probably played them by now. This has been four days, by the way, since recording the video. I mean, since they posted these comments. All right, Snake. Let's see. To me, this uh, DLC is overall disappointment. Six new missions that are two to four player only, not single player friendly. Yeah, I'm surprised that at the very least you couldn't play solo, but... It's just the way it is. I mean, you, if you have two really good players, you can knock these out pretty good. Let's see, even on normal setting, overall hard uh, for noobs. Yeah, newer players are going to uh, have a very difficult time with these missions. And maybe that's kind of the point. Just like with the Doomsday Heist, maybe they're not necessarily meant for new players. It's for like more experienced players that have played the game, that have ranked up, that have grinded the contact missions, that have gotten pretty decent at contact missions, and gotten good at the heist missions. So maybe it's kind of like a tiered thing when it comes to your experience and skills. So, I mean, that could be an issue for newer players. See, and you need to buy the penthouse to access them as a host. Yeah, unfortunately it's a requirement. You have to have the penthouse in order to uh, do the uh, six uh, casino missions. See... Yeah, it's cosmetic. It is cosmetic, but people like that sort of thing. People have been wanting, you know, their own uh, interior for a while now that they could customize to a certain degree. I wish that there were more layouts besides just three to choose from. But at the same time, I do like the fact that Rockstar is continuing to make it more and more customizable every time they introduce introduce a new property. So maybe eventually we'll get to the point where we'll have more than three. Maybe we'll have like six different art. 10 different or 12 different interiors to choose from along with everything else that they're implementing. See, gambling options look okay, but I'm not attracted to them. Yeah, I understand. I understand. A lot of people don't really care for uh, the gambling aspects of the Diamond Casino update, even if you have access to it in your country. So I do understand that, Snake. There's people that have been wanting the casino update to open for quite some time. So you, every update is going to appeal to a group of people and it's also going to not appeal to another group of people. And there's definitely p plenty of people that play this game that could care less for gambling. So all that is not going to appeal to you or a lot of other players at all. Kyle, let's see. The casino is a great addition and some of the new cars are nice. However, I'm getting tired of Grand Theft Auto Online. I still play it often. But I haven't played regularly in two years. I'm personally ready for Grand Theft Auto 6 or something new. Yeah, there seems to be a fatigue, even though Rockstar has managed to uh, keep this game going, to Rockstar's credit, and to the community's credit as well, because there's a huge community out there worldwide that still support this game. And I've mentioned this before, that at the beginning of Grand Theft Auto Online, the barrel of ideas was full. You know, at the top, you, you had us waiting patiently for heist, because they teased heist forever until we finally got it. But underneath Heist, you know, there's still tons and tons of content, like lowriders, bikers, along with all the various uh, passive businesses and gun running and crates, etc. But with each new update, you know, the, the barrel and barrel gets drained, right? That barrel, the idea barrels, we'll call it, gets drained a little bit more. So I think we're getting close to the bottom of the barrel. Maybe we still have a naval update to look forward to. I know a lot of people have been speculating on that one. There was some evidence that popped out like a year or so ago regarding a naval update. Probably takes time for Rockstar to make. And a lot of us are hoping that that might be the December update. And once again, it'll be a military-themed update, obviously, because it's naval-themed. After that, then you have to wonder where else can Rockstar go from there because they've done almost everything they possibly can do. I mean, what has it been like over 30 updates now and tons of content over the past five years, going on six years? So, yeah. Eventually, yeah, I mean, fatigue sets in and ideas start to run out. It's just a reality we have to face. True Gamer, great review. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys enjoy my reviews. I try to do my best, and I appreciate you guys always supporting the channel, whether it's reviews, rants, my live streams, etc. Silver, good buddy Silver. Let's see. Thanks for the thorough review. Thank you so much, Silver. Glad you took the time to watch my review. Very much appreciated. Carlos, no more military vehicles, so that's a good sign for me. Uh, city criminals, we're not third world country. Warlord, finally, a normal DLC with no outrageous weaponized vehicles. They have nothing to do with the update. And th there's definitely a group of the community like Carlos 
that want Grand Theft Auto to be Grand Theft Auto. It wants, wants you to be about the crime life, you know, rising up, you know, from lower level crime to upper level to being a, a crime boss. But unfortunately, there's also a part of the community that also likes the military stuff. They like the tanks. They, they like the fighter jets. They like the attack helicopters. But Rockstar then goes a step too far with some of the futuristic stuff, like the broomstick or the orbital cannon, which is used and abused by a lot of the griefers and tryhards, which might make the game fun for them. But for the rest of the community, it's not as fun, and it starts to feel less and less like uh, Grand Theft Auto whenever they add content like that. Now, you could make a counter-argument that in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, we had the jetpack, we've always had helicopters, well, Vice City. <laughs> Since Vice City, we've had helicopters. We've also had a, what the uh, Hydra introduced in San Andreas as well as the Hunter, and uh, what the, uh, let's see, the uh, Annihilator in Grand Theft Auto 4, and of course, uh, the Buzzard, Ballad of Gay Tony. So all that stuff is acceptable, but I think that some of the content, like the broomstick, like the oppressor, I mean, yeah, the oppressor mark II, the orbital cannon. Hopefully Rockstar's seen that there's been a mostly negative feedback and maybe they'll just keep it grounded going forward when it comes to the military content, like with a naval update. You know, like PT boats. Stuff like that. Nothing ridiculous. Something that's, that exists in the real world that would make sense in a naval-themed update. We'll see what happens. I see Thunderwing. I see I brought the I bought the penthouse. I see I was there during the stream. Well, I'm glad uh, you were there. I thought I said hi to you, and if I said hi to you and missed me saying hi to you, I apologize. I try to say hi to everybody, but sometimes chat goes by really fast. But I try not to miss anybody. I try at least. I see I like the customization. If we don't get the mansions DLC, I don't know how I feel about this DLC. I'm happy for something that's not uh, point A point B business update. Yeah, I mean, we do have a ton of business content already in the game already, and I know people really love the passive businesses and want more of that, and hopefully Rockstar has other ideas for continuing uh, to produce new businesses or new, uh, like, gun running, new warehouse-style missions, maybe with the naval update. Let's see, Sue. Let's see, thank you for the props, Sue. Appreciate it. Let's see, Psychotic Hitcher. Let's see, we are getting more updates until 2021. Therefore, we're getting more DLC updates until the release of the PlayStation 5. Well, I sincerely hope so, uh, Psychotic Hitcher. I know that Rockstar has mentioned it in Newswires that they have no intention of abandoning Grand Theft Auto Online just yet, that their plan is to basically continue making content for both Grand Theft Auto Online and Red Dead Online. But it really does depend on two things. A, are people going to continue playing Grand Theft Auto Online? And are they going to end up still making money off the updates? If they're still getting in the shark card money from the wells and from other people that purchase shark cards, whatever rhyme or reason, I'm not judging. You know, that, that all depends on whether or not they decide it's financially feasible to continue making content for Grand Theft Auto Online. So I think at the very least we possibly have at least another year, maybe two to go. Maybe longer, I guess we'll find out. Or maybe Rockstar will just continue updating Grand Theft Auto Online into Grand Theft Auto Online into Grand Theft Auto 6. That could happen. Let's see, Dakota. For me, I give it a 2.2 .2 out of 10. Don't really care for any of the new casino games. I'm not against them. They're just not my thing. And I understand that. There's a lot of people like that. Don't really care for much for, the, for them either way. Uh, the part of me that I had fun with was the missions. I'd love to do them more, but my friends, if you still have patience for Rockstar's crap, don't want to replay them. And like I mentioned, after you get the bonus money and you get the uh, Armored Paragon, the, the payouts are crap, especially for how difficult those missions are. I mean, you think they'd at least be like twenty or 30000 uh, to do those missions. Because, I mean, one or two are, is not too difficult, but you, I think you get the point. I see their argument is valid. A lot of the uh, missions don't even cover the ammo costs. Yeah, exactly. The payouts suck. The last two, the roof, and the kill the Texans are brutal. Yeah, especially the one on the roof. And, you know, if you decide to go in guns blazing <laughs> on the finale... Especially if you use Mark II ammo in any capacity. Yeah, yeah. Mark II ammo is very, very expensive. See, Riley, <laughs> she wants to know if any of you want champagne. Well, only if you're legal. And if you're going to drink champagne, be responsible. <laughs> See, Daniel. Best update because of the temptation of Aguila. <laughs> People love that statue. I, I just don't know why. King AZ. Let's see. I actually really like this uh, DLC. Good video, GB. I feel sorry for the players that can't gamble, though. Yeah, me too. Me too. Let's see, continuing, let's see, uh, Scarecrow. 
Let's see, as we know, the casino has done nothing but turn pub servers into total war zones and around the grounds of the casino. That alone has given the DLC a horrible aftertaste in addition to more overpriced cars, useless penthouse, uh, crappy odds of the gambling, and it's really been a turnoff more than anything. I feel that Rockstar wants to fix the cas if Rockstar wants to fix the casino, they should really focus on righting all the wrongs and nerfing the jets, broomsticks. Well, I don't think the jets have an issue. I think the attack, the fighter jets are fine. I think the broomstick is the serious problem. And if, if fighter jets have trouble taking on a broomstick, then you know that there's an issue in the game. But we all have our different opinion on this particular topic. I see remove the lock on missiles, explosive gun ammo. Okay. See, so maybe add a few uh, high payout heists. Yeah. I see overall, personally, give this DLC a 3 out of 10. Uh, just the sheer lack of interest Rockstar seems to have with actually listening to the masses, which I feel is pretty generous considering we have waited five long years for the casino to finally open. And there's been a lot of rumors that behind the scenes they have been working on this casino update for quite some time. And a lot of it could have been the legal issues, right? Having their crack team of lawyers and paralegals at Take Two, Rockstar, looking at all the countries, gambling online laws, and trying to craft a way to, to post this update to where it could be financially feasible. So that's just my theory. I don't base that on any fact, but it makes sense. Wolf, my only question at this point is how's Grand Theft Auto Online will end by the time Grand Theft Auto 6 is out on its way in? And I say this because the beginning of our story was our character coming into Los Santos and fighting the way to the top over the years. Uh, but how would the story conclude for online character? After all the struggles, will we get credit scene after the final DLC? Let's see. Dakota chimes in. Uh, let's see. Okay. Actually, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna read that part. The back and forth, like I mentioned. Besides, this video has already gone on for a while. And we still have one more uh, other video to go over, comment-wise. By the way, I appreciate all you being here, sitting back, enjoying the feedback from all of you, my awesome viewers, subscribers, and fans, and members of the Go Burns Nation. I would say that we're probably not going to get some final end credits scene. Similar to how a lot of us have like lore stories, background stories. I even made a video about that a while back that was kind of popular. Like each of us have an idea of where our character came from. I guess the basis is like Liberty City. But before Liberty City, what was our character like? What, what drove our character to move from Liberty City all, all the way across the country to Los Santos? And was our character born in Liberty City? Because some people like to say their character weren't born in Liberty City. They came from somewhere else, whether it was Vice City or from the Caribbean or from across the ocean, etc. So, I mean, in the end, it may just come down to us creating our own end for our characters. Unless, like I mentioned already, possibly, just possibly, we are able to, you know, continue that story with uh, Grand Theft Auto Online 2.0 when Grand Theft Auto 6 comes out. I guess only time will tell. Let's see, pros, remove passive mode and weaponized vehicles, cons, people wasting their money and not getting a chance to play with the casino stuff and weaponized vehicles. Yeah, Kamal, see, Kamal, he loves his weaponized toys. He loves it. And fortunately for everyone like Kamal who loves weaponized toys, sad. Lots of impossible sadness. I don't mind militarized vehicles, as I mentioned, like tanks, fighter jets, attack helicopters, but I hope that we don't see any more broomsticks down the road. All right, so let's see. Uh, Spare and Donkey had to chime in. This uh, DLC is perfectly fine about militarization. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And like I said, if the next update's a military-themed update, they're going to make up for that. Believe me, they will. All right, so, okay, so how do you get the white robe? And I answered you, and you're very welcome, pilot. Very welcome. So, some of you probably watched the review video. You saw Wolfstein wearing that really nice white robe, and you're wondering, Go Burns, how do I get that awesome white diamond casino robe? Well, you have to unfortunately buy the casino penthouse, and then you get it complimentary. Go to your uh, clothing, go to loungewear, and it should be there. That's where I found it. So, you're welcome. And finally, uh, Ragged Pants. Let's see if you wish to buy shark cards. To pay for this free update, you're spending almost $800, not interested, even before I found that out. And, yeah, I mean, there's people out there that is going to spend real money because either, A, they have the money or they don't have the time. I hope they have the money, even if they don't have the time, because there are more important things than shark cards, like putting food on the table and paying the bills. I'm just saying. 
All right, so we're moving over from the review video to the rant video regarding the story update. I hope you enjoyed both videos, by the way, along with this one. So what were your thoughts regarding the Dama Casino story and characters? By the way, you're welcome to chime in below in the comment section of your overall thoughts regarding the Diamond update, whether it's the story itself, the content, etc. And no, I'm not going to do another review video, another feedback video. But I will always read over your comments because I do love reading your comments. And I do, whenever you do ask a question, I will do my best to answer it if I'm able to. So let's go. Joseph, the story was shit. The antagonist was shit. The cars were coolish. The payout was shit. Overall, standard Rockstar content. Yep, short and sweet. I would agree with you on that. And that was pretty much our point in uh, the rant video, is that the story and the antagonist, yeah, underwhelming. I see Whiskey, uh, Chang refuses to sell the business because it's a family business, and all of a sudden he sells it uh, to the uh, nephew because the uncle is now dead. Well, I think they do mention in the cutscene, and this is something we should have gone over in our rant video, and I always miss something, which is why we have the awesome comment section. You, uh, you guys always add something that I may miss out on. But I think there was a cutscene where it's briefly mentioned how the Chang family is just tired of the BS. They're tired of this, this headache in Los Santos between the Duggins and the casino. And they just want to get out from under it. They want to exit gracefully. And that's where Thornton comes in, the nephew, and he says, hey, we'll give you a good deal. You know, you can, you can leave with honor. And it can be a W for you. It can be a win. So I, I think that's what it really came down to is that the Changs really didn't at the end of the day, they really just didn't have the heart to fight for the casino because even though, like, Tao talks about how they're going to go to war, do any Changs come in to help Tao out or to help us out when we're fighting the professionals and, you know, Avery's uh, mercenary force? No. So I guess you could kind of, like, draw a conclusion that maybe uh, Chang's uncle didn't really care as much. I mean, he's on the other side of the world, probably has other issues going on, and maybe... Just maybe things are going better in China, most likely. Red! What's up, Red? By the way, Red was also one of the peeps in uh, the uh, rant video. So we had Red, we had Kane chatting. You can always find Red posting his awesome images in our Discord. And by the way, Tuesday was Red's birthday, so happy birthday to Red. It was fun. Thank you for letting me participate. Well, thank you, Red, for being part of it. Hope you enjoyed being part of the rant video. Let's see. Snake. Weak story. Weak missions. Just a filler DLC. I totally agree with all the points you three made. I'm not going to buy a penthouse in the casino at all unless Rockstar releases an update. They'll make the office computer. Yeah, the, the office is such shit. And that's something we did go over in the review video. So, yeah, I mean, this is kind of a two-for-one deal. Our three-for-one. I went over the community tab feedback that I did along with my review video, along with this rant video for Monday. <laughs> I'm throwing it all in there. It's an all-you-can-read uh, buffet, I suppose. But yeah, that office computer was such a freaking ripoff, and I hope that enough people were warned in advance not to purchase it, because it's such a ripoff. Let's see, Chris Young Gun, it would be cool if we could hire Vincent for the nightclub. See, the nightclub would make sense for Vincent. That's something that Kane, Red, and I didn't think about. We were thinking about the passive businesses, so... That's where we wanted to send uh, Vincent. And hopefully we see more of Vincent down the road because I feel like he was done dirty by Rockstar. And I just don't like the way the story ended for him. But maybe it's not the end of Vincent. Because I get the feeling that a lot of the community really enjoyed Vincent. He's probably everyone's favorite new character. So maybe we'll see him in the next update. All right. So we'll see. We'll see. A uh, guy who plays games agrees with you. Yeah, it's a good idea, Chris. Very good idea. The nightclub could work for him, even though most of us don't really give a shit for the nightclub anymore. <laughs> You know what we need in a nightclub? You know, hire Vincent as our promoter. I know he was a security guy. Hire him as the promoter, and then it ensures that your nightclub stays at the minimum popularity so you can have the free drinks, and Tony and Laszlo can stop crying. That'd be a good idea, Rockstar, but they're not going to do that because they don't ever go back and do shit like that anyways. El Davo, one of our members, another great rant, GB. I'm glad you enjoyed the rant, and of course, thanks to Kane and Red once again for participating in Monday's rant video. Another awesome member of ours includes UG Outlaw. When it comes to Vincent, I still call racist, but anyway, yeah, the story was weak. And I mean, they could have uh, got ideas for the casino movie, then that would have been an interesting story. Wasted potential. There's something I thought about after I recorded and posted the rant video, like, Monday. Since there was only six missions, it's very possible that there was an original version of the story, right? That had a lot more into it. 
but because there was only six missions, maybe they had to cut some stuff out. And by cutting some things out, like more time with, with Avery and the interaction between him and Thornton and, and having Avery built up as a legitimate baddie up to the same level of Avon, spoilers, Doomsday Heist has been out for a while now. Most of you probably know that already. But anyways, maybe just a lot of things are just chopped right in the story for convenience because they had only six like casino missions to put the story around. So that too is a possibility. If that's the case, then there's some things they, they should have kept in the cutscenes. I see Kane. Yes, Kane was, like I mentioned, he was also part of the rant video. I see. Thanks for having me on GB. I would think uh, joining you on the uh, Mount Soapbox. Well, you're welcome. Glad you guys enjoyed your trek up there. See, also for those who watch videos, sorry I sounded quiet. Yeah, it was early in the morning when we recorded that video, so yeah, he was being a little quiet, plus he was also kind of tired. Let's see, JT Max. Agatha was an obnoxious character, not just with our phones, but in story as well. Yeah, there were times I wanted to like Agatha, but like Kane pointed out in the rant video, the fact that after Thornton basically fires Vincent after everything Vincent did for the casino, like, she didn't say anything. Nothing. She, she didn't even go, go to bat for Thornton. I mean, I think there's, like, some dialogue later on post-story uh, mission where she mentions some sort of regret about the whole situation. But, yeah, that definitely knocked her down a few notches, in my opinion. And I know, in the end, she's just a character. You have to blame the writers for that. Dr. Anarchy. Just another, just uh, got around to watching the video, dropped a like. Well, thank you for the like. I really do appreciate the likes for all my videos. They definitely help. And the dislikes, I understand the dislikes, even though sometimes they are dislike bots, whatever. In the end, it's algorithms and it doesn't really matter. But if you actually like the content, liking is appreciative and it also helps me and, you know, the YouTube algorithms to some degree. Let's see, maybe Tao wasn't in the car. I think, actually, one moment. Let's go to our Discord real quick because I think Fat Chinese Gaming did post something in Discord earlier. They were having a discussion. No, we're not going to go over uh, what was discussed in Discord. Okay, you guys are welcome to join our Discord, by the way. So, Fat Chinese Gaming did this side-by-side -side screenshot. I don't know if, if he went and did this or if he went and found it. But, of course, there's Tao in... Uh, obviously the casino update and this is an image of Tao beside his father in uh, Death Wish the final uh, GTA 5 mission uh, which in my opinion is probably the canon mission because there is artwork to prove that and it, it just makes sense for that to be canon and that basically goes back to our, our running theory that maybe the the canon way that uh, Tao's father was dispatched was maybe with just with a sniper rifle by Franklin because Franklin used the sniper rifle a few times throughout the events of Grand Theft Auto V. I know the easiest way to deal with with uh, Chang is a rocket launcher or a sticky bomb. I did it as well, but maybe that's not the canon way that Franklin did dealt with it. Anyways, let's continue. <laughs> okay, where were we? Okay, Kyle, it would have actually been cool to see the story DLC. Yeah, yeah, it sucks it against story DLC. Just the way it goes. Say so Gizmo, to me it felt rushed. It's like they didn't start working on the story until they announced there was a DLC coming out. It seemed uh, to just stop. Yeah, the resolution was very, very rushed. I don't think it's finished yet. I I think it is finished. I don't think we're going to get any more story, Gizmo. But don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. Maybe to drag out the life of Grand Theft Auto V longer, they should be laying the rest and uh, lay it to rest and focus on Red Dead. Uh, yeah, they're not going to do that, uh, Gizmo, because they're still a pretty loyal community, myself included. Even though I'm part of the Reddit Online community, I want Reddit Online to succeed. I'm looking forward to hopefully an August summer update. I still kind of sort of want you know, more content for Grand Theft Auto Online, even going on nearly six years. I just want good quality content and good updates. So it makes me worry and think that it's kind of the shit we have to look forward to with the summer update. Well, I don't think so, because it goes back to the barrel thing. I know this is off topic for a moment. But whereas the barrel of Grand Theft Auto Online ideas are low, the barrel for Red Dead Online ideas are still brim full. I mean, the water of ideas are still are like at the very, very tip top of that barrel. So Rockstar's got hopefully a few years of ideas to go through when it comes to new content for Red Dead Online. So that's the big difference right there. 
Let's see. Uh, K5. I'll just call you K5. K5 asks, says, uh, it would have been better off as a business. A lot of people wanted um, the casino to be a passive business. And I can see the logic in it being a passive business. Or, you know, at the very least, you're, you're doing things to help ensure that the casinos like maybe maybe a huge money laundering aspect because that's one of the big reasons why the casinos were owned by crime families back in the day was it was good for money money laundering millions and millions of dollars probably billions of dollars but yeah that's one of the reasons why the the mob ended up you know buying most casinos in vegas or building a lot of casinos in vegas and atlantic city (laughs) because of that reason but we already technically have money laundering as one of the biker businesses so they'd have to call it something else entirely we do have a lot of passive businesses in the game already, but there's always room for more as long as Rockstar can come up with cool ideas. But I go back and forth on the subject. I mean, I like the fact personally that we can actually gamble, even though I do wish the gambling was just strictly with in-game money. Alas, it's not the case. Let's see. John Ridley, do a rant on Red Down Online, please. Okay. You have to be more specific. I do accept rent requests. Whether it's about Grand Theft Auto Online, Red Dead Online, uh, YouTube. But you have to be more specific, John. I'm just saying. And I already have done plenty of Red Dead Online rants already. Go check my Red Dead Online, I mean my rant playlist, uh, 3.0 and 2.0. I got several playlists for you to check out. Wolf, missed opportunity. Uh, they should have a shootout in the casino. I mean, yeah, we do get a little fisticuffs inside the casino. But I don't know if a shootout inside the casino would have... I mean, it would have been uh, interesting. It would have been interesting. Oh, come on, Riley. Enough of the champagne already. <laughs> Genesis, Honeymoon Week is now over, and I really... Let's see. This is what he thinks about the DLC. It's a bigger disappointment than After Hours and Arena War combined. So Genesis liked After Hours and Arena War more than the Diamond Casino update. This DLC can't even be played by more than half the players. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's half though, Genesis. I don't know if it I know it's a it's a percentage. And obviously over fifty countries are affected by this unable to gamble. And that sucks because of gambling laws. And hopefully they don't get in trouble for doing anything to try to, you know, VPN wise. Because I don't want anyone getting in trouble over that. And at the same time, I don't want people that have gambling addiction issues to end up spending real money going broke in real life because of gambling in Grand Theft Auto Online. So, yeah. But I don't know if it's that huge of a chunk of the community, but it's obviously a pretty big portion. Let's see. Wolf, honestly, it's easy to see that the Death Wish ending is more canon than ever. Uh, yeah, yeah. that's why I mentioned the uh, artwork, yeah. But, yeah, I, yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I think I made that point already, Wolf. <laughs> so, Wolf has something else to say. We'll just move on. Let's see, I just want my phone call. Online stories always suck, just like Red Dead Online. I disagree. I think there's been some decent stories. I think the, the high stories were pretty compelling, pretty interesting. Doomsday stories were, were good, even though some people didn't like the Doomsday Heist themselves. And I like the Land of Opportunity story. I mean, is it the same level as, say, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2? No, but it's, I think it's okay. But we all have our opinions. Teach their own. Wolf, again... Avon Hertz was technically the first true villain of Grand Theft Auto Online. Considering all these updates were about building a criminal empire before realizing that unless the world... Yeah, good point. Good point. Archangel, I think you guys are right. Uh, the story feels very rushed uh, to me, and maybe there was 10 missions. Uh, 10 missions, I don't know. I think they I think they were trying to stretch it out as much as they could. Because I even feel like one, or, one mission, like the tanker mission, I felt like that was kind of a filler mission. Like, maybe... They had five missions, and they felt like they needed to at least to have six because it's a, it's a very copypasta uh, type of destroy-everything contact mission. It's also annoying because they keep calling you every five seconds every time you destroy a tanker. They don't have to do that, by the way. It's unnecessary. So on one hand, you have them probably cutting down the story, but also cutting things out that may have made the story flow a little bit better. It would be interesting to ever see what the rough draft was, the first copy of the story itself. But I guess we'll probably never know because you know how Rockstar is when it comes to those sorts of secrets. Archangel. Let's see. I already talked to Archangel. Sorry, Archangel. Let's see. Sue. Let's see. Remember when Rockstar uh, went in depth with the game DLCs? Uh, Yeah. 
I think that the story DLC did did suffer. Uh, this DLC is trash, according to Tori. I'm I'm thinking Tori that MOG is trash. It looks like trash. Okay, teach their own. That's why I ask for your opinions, your comments, whether I agree with you or disagree with you. As long as you're respectful and civil, you're welcome to your opinions. Fat Chinese Gaming, another one of our members. I hate the fact that we keep getting phone calls in the middle of the fight. Yeah, yeah. I just pointed that out a moment ago. And that, that definitely was annoying, to say the least. And I know some got angry with me when I was hanging up with on Agatha a few times last week during the live streams. But can you blame me? Not really. <laughs> And yeah, what happened to Vincent was a disgrace as well. I think most of us feel the same way about that. And finally, I think uh, Michael Washington is last. The story was weak, and somewhat Tao doesn't want to sell the casino since it's a family business. But after Avery dies, he sells it to his spineless cousin. Fire, yeah, Thornton, uh, the nephew, fires Vincent. The penthouse oh, thought was going to be the new movies. Yeah, it's the same movies. I mean, yeah, that's another waste of money right there, Michael, the uh, theater. It's the same movie, same trailers that we've had for nearly six years now in the game. Nothing really new. The Office sucks. Yep. Office sucks. For the most part, unless you just really want to, like, decorate the hell out of your penthouse, I think that's the only reason why the, you buy The Office. And, like, the spa, okay, yay for the spa. The stylist that has no new hairstyles. Good job, Rockstar. No motivation to, to purchase most of the extra... Uh, parts of the penthouse. I mean, maybe the bar area to, to get drinks, you know, like the nightclub drinks were, were copy pasted over, including the Macbeth. At least you don't have to worry about the popularity issue, right? And uh, of course, the uh, two arcade games they added. So if you want to play those, which the, that, the appeal and interest for that is limited as well. It's finite. Eventually you get bored of uh, both. And I think like uh, Street Crimes, you have to have at least two people to play. So you need at least two to four people to play Street Crimes. The other one you can play by yourself, Invade to Persuade 2. But, you know, it's finite. It, it's just a, a mini game, as they say. So continuing, where, where do we leave off? Yeah, let's see. Uh, we haven't had uh, any new hairstyles. Yeah, they really. I don't think we're ever going to get any new uh, hairstyles. Michael Washington, oh, and the champagne guy, Tom Connors, is so annoying that when the casino is about to be taken over and destroyed... Yeah, I know Riley found that funny and several others enjoyed that and chuckled. I just feel like they, they took that joke and they ran of it a little too much. Just a little. <laughs> but anyways, I appreciate everything you all had to say, your thoughts, your views, and opinions. I know we went on for a quick minute. I had nothing else going on today, no live streams, no other content. So I decided to do a feedback video going over a few different things. To see what you all thought overall a week into the casino update. And if you didn't have a chance to uh, chime in with your thoughts, views, and opinions overall, you can do so right now below in the comments section.